what's up guys we're back in and today we got a review of the dual pad cross a16 now there are two models of this pad right the dual pad a16 there's the cross model and there's the epig and i'll put those on screen here so that's the epig that there's the cross and the major difference is right there right the switches the epig comes with the v1s the cross comes with the v2s now personally i prefer the v2s based on my experience with this uh, 3d printing controller that i tried out my first ever controller leverless controller um, i had a really bad experience with the v1s where this the 3d printed buttons broke off in the little still nubs there right so i kind of don't mess with those switches anymore so we're going to dive in let's take a look so see what we got so we got our box here let's up. All right and what's in the box so we've got our instructions okay nice a16 get that out the way We've got our charger cable, which is a USB-A to USB-C. Get that out the way. We have our feet for our pad here. And what is this? Well, first, what is this? This is our key puller, so get that out the way. All right, and these are... These are feet, I believe. This is pretty cool. We'll check. We're going to keep this here for a minute. Let's keep one of the... It comes with two. Perfect. So, and it's double-sided tape on the back. So we'll keep these here while we figure this out and we'll get this out the way. All right. So let's get it out of here. What do we got? Get the box out of here. We've got our pad. And I'll protect the packaging. Keep it off. And let's open it up. So through the power of editing, we've got our controller here, right? We've got the dual pad A16. So put that right there in the middle. And these, I think I figured out, these are feet that go on the bottom of the pad here. So when you put it down, oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> and you can kind of slip those on there and it holds the pad up. That's pretty cool. Now, I don't know if I'll try, I'll try and see if I like it. On a desk, I'm sure you can stand it up. I personally put it on my lap, so I don't really need these, but that is pretty cool. So I'm gonna get these out the way that it comes in the box. That's cool. All right, so. Uh, I was reached out to by this team to say, hey, they, they see my channel. They know that I like to try out these leverless controllers. I'm currently moving away from the regular standard D-pad controllers. I tried a joystick years ago. I still have it. I uh, will bring that to the table and compare it as well. And I had a hard time finding the angles with the joysticks, right? So when it came to leverless, I started with the 3D printed and I've worked my way to where we are now. I'm really liking this experience. I can make sure that I hit my moves exactly when I want to. Um, everything is precise. I can move around really fast. I really like that. So let's talk more about this pad. I've had a really good time with this. So what I kind of like is here, here are your directionals. And the colors are different because I had extra switches that I bought with my B1 for the fight box that did not fit. So they were there and these button caps here are just standard button caps you can find anywhere. So that's kind of nice that if you already have some in stock, you can just plug them right on here and you won't have any problems. I'll pop this off and you can see they're just standard, you know, and the switch is the standard. So that's pretty cool. So we'll pop that back on. So I went ahead and threw some blacks on and kept the whites that were there. That way I can find my directionals. Uh, the buttons and these are the outside that I never really use. And of course, I usually put grip tape, so I'll probably grip tape this up as well. But again, that's the design. So what's nice is when you're using the pad here, your directionals or if you are aero styles there, and then you have your extra, your L3 is here and your R3 is here. And it's kind of nice when at first I wasn't sure what I think about having it over here, you know, if I can hit it. But when you're moving, it's just like typing on a keyboard. So when I do something, I put the heat for Tekken over here and the Rage over here. I can just tap that and have heat. Or when I go here, hit Rage. And it's kind of nice, even with Street Fighter, having the button so close rather than having my thumb hit. And this is here, so you have that. It's kind of cool. When you first use it, this button is not activated. It says Capture on it, but I haven't really gone through and reconfigured everything just yet. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or just stick with you know these two here. I really have any mess with these. So if you're new to this, let's go ahead and go through what you would need to do to use this pad, right? So we're gonna talk about PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So for the PlayStation 5, you're gonna to wanna to use the Brooks adapter or the Mayflash adapter, right? And I'll put this here. Or you'll wanna use this here, this little mini boots, the Magic Boot adapter. This thing is really small. It fits right here on the side. Um, it's It's, upside down so that's kind of interesting but you flip it over and slide that right in and this holds really tight and that will be your pass through right 
they expect you to put these adapters in here. I never do this because it's sticking out. If you have this on your lap, any little bump, you're going to break and rip this right off, right? So I don't do that. I'll just put this at the end of the cable. I deal with that little bit of lag. I don't have any problems, but this is the way to go. It's a little magic boots. You stick it right there and you have no problems with it getting banged up. It's perfect. All right, so we'll take that there. When it comes to Xbox, you have your Brooks, which is the green one. Do not buy this. As of this recording, this adapter, as soon as you plug it in, Microsoft tells you this is no longer supported. So I don't know what they're gonna do, but I have it and it does not work, so don't buy that. The Xbox May Flash is the one you wanna buy, right? So this one here, and again, you can plug it in the side. And what's nice is when you plug it in, as soon as you connect the controller, once it recognizes you hit the home button for PlayStation and Xbox, you hit the home, which is your, you know, your PS or Xbox button. Then you hit start right over here and that activates everything. With Xbox, you can pull this out and it'll remember the controller as it stands right now. And you can play without the adapter plugged to the cable or the device. It, it recognizes this as that, so that's perfect. Let's get this out the way. All right, so let's compare this to some of the other things that we have, right? So the standard things you're gonna be looking at if you're new to this is Xbox and PS5. So when you look at this, how it fits in the controller here, so this is your standard larger size pad. It's nowhere near as big as a hitbox. It's not wide. So let's go ahead and do the paper test. I like to take a standard sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11 printer paper, and lay it on top of our pads to test to get a clue of how big these are and what you're planning to expect. You know, we'll, we'll take a piece of paper, put the paper on the edge, right there on the bottom and on the edge. And it's a little bit more than a USB head, longer than, you know, wider than a, a wide piece of paper. As far as height, when you hold this here on the bottom, it is basically slightly shorter than a piece of paper. Down, yeah. So if you're curious, you know, how big is this? I wanna know, is this too big or too small for me? I would take a standard piece of paper, lay it down, and put your hands on it, and this is how much space you're gonna have to play on. All right, just get this out the way. Let's compare it to some other things. So I'll slide this back here. And we've got a standard Xbox controller, right? So you can see here, it's about, yeah, it's an Xbox controller, almost a controller and a half, roughly, as far as wide, maybe almost two controllers wide. When it comes to a PlayStation 5 controller, I mean, they're basically the same size as Xbox, right? Slightly bigger, but you can see almost from point to point here is that to that. So it's pretty much roughly two PS5 controllers wide, roughly, a little bit, little bit shorter than that. We'll pull out our 3D printed pad that I have here, right? So with this pad, it is much bigger. The button layout is now, here's where things change up. Here you can see the bottom buttons here. This one is lower, so I'm gonna put that there. And when I lay it down, you can see the top button right there, whereas this one's here. So when you wanna put, lay it on top, it is a slightly different shape. And what I'm noticing is, these buttons are closer together than some of the other pads that I had. We'll bring them out to compare, but that's how you can compare this one. It's about, it's, there you go. It's roughly as tall as this is wide, right? Let's get out the way. Let's grab a joystick. So with the joystick here, your joystick player, this is not as wide, but you know, not far off. And as far as tall, it's, it's almost as tall, but not as tall. Again, roughly a USB head, right? And we'll kind of move this out the way. And we kind of hear the button loudness, right? So these, so it is much quieter than a joystick is, right? When you're kind of having fun with that. Okay, so let's find some space to put this here. We'll put the joystick on the top. Put the controllers here, put the 360 pad over here, and let's pull out my other original pad, right? So the next one I purchased was the Fightbox B1. So we'll put this here on the bottom. We'll take a quick look here and see they are basically the same width. The B1 is slightly wider, right, as far as height is concerned. Kind of put them there. It is taller than the B1. So let's check out the button sounds here, so. Right, so these are definitely quieter, but these are the lower profile switches and the size, you can see the difference. And again, the bigger difference is when it comes to the gap, the spacing of the actual buttons. And here, 
I could put a full USB head through here and so a little bit of space. With this one, it does not fit really. It won't, right? So that is really major difference with, you're looking at this as, this is a bigger pad with tighter buttons and you have your, your extras on the out instead of in any other place they wanna put it, it's kind of there, right? And again, you can see if I bend the buttons, it fits, but really just sliding it through, that one fits actually perfectly. So that one's a little spaced out more, but the directionals, that one's spaced out more. Every other button, it doesn't fit through. And that's by design, right? So that is the way you would kind of know if you're looking for a bigger pad with bigger buttons per se, it's probably the same size buttons, right? But just a bigger size pad to fit in your lap, uh, the non-smaller buttons, just a standard large button, but the keys are closer together for your fingers, here's what you're looking at. And if you want on your left, you know, all different things, that's why you have these, these buttons there. Let's take this off the table. And then the other one that I purchased was the T16. So when I first saw this, I was thinking, wait a minute, this is just a T16, right? But again, when I started looking at the websites and seeing the differences, this is its own thing. So when I put it side by side, we put it on top, they are basically the same width. They are the same width. When it comes to height, this device is taller, right? And let's do our tape measure here, our good old fashioned USB stick. So put that there and I'll lay it on the table. It is basically the whole head bigger. So it is taller by about this much, right? All the way to the top, put that out the way. And then we go back to the spacing. So with this one, again, these this device does not truly fit through these without wedging it through. Whereas these, it fits just fine. This is almost the same width as the fight box when it comes to button width, right? So these fit through. So when you're looking at the two, the layout style is totally different and the buttons are slightly wider and spaced out more. So that's kind of what you're looking at when you're comparing the different things, right? When you're looking at this device, you're again looking at, do you like this style? Do you prefer the buttons being closer together? These are, I will say, the larger buttons. They're not large by any means, right? They are just the same size all across the board, whereas most are smalls with one large. These are the standard larges all around. And here's one of the caps. You can see when I put it on top, it is the same size. From afar, it looks smaller. It's actually bigger than these smaller buttons, right? So these are the larger buttons all across the board, just closer together and a different layout. Uh, when it came to setting everything up, it was in PS4 mode out the box. I went ahead and went into the website to configure things and put it on PS5 compatible. So they also put free artwork in the box. So there you go, that comes with it. And you can see it's a standard layout, so it's kind of cool. So you can open it up and put that in there. So we'll take that off. Uh, when I took this apart, it is thicker acrylic on the top and then on the bottom, so that was easy to do. I didn't do the bottom because there is a glue or a sticker or something here that's holding this plug in place. So I didn't feel comfortable unsticking that and putting my artwork here and closing it back up. So I left that alone, but I do have the front done. Some pretty cool art I found online. Here is where another feature that's pretty cool. When you look at the bottom, the USB plug is here that you plug into, right? And then you have your switches here. So usually I have my cable holder on this side, but in this case, I put it on the other because it has a focus mode, which is actually really cool. And what it does is when you flick this switch, all the lights turn off, all of the buttons up here stop working and you go into a tournament mode. So that way when you're doing things, if you hit one of these by accident, you won't cheat and be disqualified for your round. It locks it all down. And when you're doing things, people can't see what you're pressing. They can hear it, but they can't see it. So that's pretty cool. And it's at the flick of a switch, you just turn it on and off. Here we have our SOCD. So you put a neutral, up dominant, whatever you like to do on all these pads, they're running the same software behind the scenes, right? So the, when you go on the web configurator or even with the, the commands and the buttons, you can change that, but it is nice that it has a switch here. Like I never changed my SOCD, but it's cool. I can do it on the fly if I want to, right? So we'll put that back. And then lastly, this is pretty cool. This is your D, your left stick, right stick D-pad. So you can, when you're saying tech and you're designing your character, you can change it to right stick to spin the model around put it back to D-pad or left stick, and then go up and down the menus and adjust things and spin them around just by a flick of a switch instead of having to remember the key combination. That's actually pretty cool, I like that. When it comes to changing colors, everything is the same because the board that's running behind this is a standard board. So that's really cool. So, so this is the Dual Pad A16 Cross Edition. Thank you, Dual Pad, for sending this out for review. Thanks for watching, bye.